the 26th of October 2024 will be, I believe, an extremely significant day in the history of our nation here in Britain. Tens of thousands of people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all ethnicities, faiths, came together on the streets of central London, around Parliament Square, at 10 Downing Street, in order to celebrate our heritage here in Britain, and also to peacefully, lawfully, joyfully, to remind the powers that be, those who have been given the privilege and the honor of serving us, of exercising governance and being in the seat of government, giving them the reminder that they are here to protect and preserve British values and our Judeo-Christian heritage, our freedoms and all that flows from that. Now, because this event has been painted by the legacy media, the mainstream media as we call them, in all sorts of negative ways, that it is really important that those who continue to read or to view the legacy media take a look at this video in order to find out a little bit more about what happened. Now there was also a counter protest and I'll touch upon that briefly. But in this video I'd like to share with you some of what happened so that you may understand that this was truly a celebration of joy and of being who we are here in Britain. I also want to talk a little bit about those who oppose what this gathering was standing for and to shed some light on where the real problems exist within our nation. I also want to talk a little bit about what it means that we have a Judeo-Christian heritage here in Britain because it seems that that has been misunderstood by some. So I'll come back to that. But turning first to the 26th of October, uh, a lot of praise and thanks to all of those who were involved in organizing this amazing event. There were tens of thousands of people. And as you'll see from the photographs, it really is difficult to count how many. By contrast, there was a very small uh, counter, quote unquote, counter demonstration. And those people were framing themselves as for some reason anti-racist. Now there's nothing in the gathering that took place which was in any way negatively racially motivated. Now I'm from Sri Lanka, Ceylon. I am the seventh child in an immigrant family. We came over in 1963. My father fought against the Nazis in the British Army in the Middle East. I understand what racial prejudice is. I have experienced it in London. I've experienced it in Huntingdon, where I live. And indeed, in standing for some of our traditional values here in Britain, it's extraordinary to see the level of prejudice that's come forward. But I can say this, the people who were on that rally, that peaceful, lawful, joyous gathering and celebration of British life and values and heritage and culture, there was no racial prejudice there or prejudice of any kind. We saw plenty of that from those who framed themselves as being the anti-racists. And they had slogans like getting out the Nazis or fascists. And all I can say is there is a high level of historical illiteracy amongst those who are presenting themselves as being anti or against those sorts of extremists. The other thing we saw was a lot of anger. They pushed people around, they gave the, tr the police a lot of trouble, and the only arrests, as far as I know, were made in those groups. It's for the general public in Britain to make an assessment about what was happening. But from the perspective of those who were gathering in order to celebrate British values, what were some of the themes? Well, one of those was about standing up to tyranny. There is a great concern here in Britain that the people who run our country no longer have the interests of the people at heart. And one of the best examples of this is the fact that the borders to this country are open and porous. The first task of a government is to provide security, safety and the well-being of the people. 
But an open border policy, which is what's happened, means that the country is unsafe. And there was a significant documentary presented by Tommy Robinson, who couldn't be with us at the time, which shows that across the country, there are huge numbers of crimes and sexual assaults against women in this nation. And this is all well documented. It's out there in the public domain. This is not in any way a racist statement. It's a statement of fact. So those are matters of great concern. And there were people from other countries in Europe who came to tell us about their story. There were some women, some young women from France who have organized there in France. And they also are having problems. They're being canceled. But they told us about the problems that they are experiencing. And one woman in particular gave her experience of having come over to this country as a student and then had to face the terror of a sexual assault by three men. And here she is in her own words. Hello, Great Britain. My name is Anaïs and I'm also a spokesperson from Collective Nemesis. It's a great pleasure to be here, but I must tell you, English is not my mother tongue. Please be kind if I make any mistake in your beautiful language. I've always been fascinated by the history of England, the architecture, the real church, churches, museums, etc. So in 2012, I came here to study English. I fell in love with your city. But that patient was suddenly destroyed one night at the exit of Edward Road Station on the Bikeloo Line. That night, I was sexually assaulted by three men of Pakistani origin. They were lauding while attacking me, as my fear was a kind of joke or, of joke or game. They wanted to control my frozen body. But by some miracle, a man entered, pushed them away and saved me right before they raped me. Thank you. Who knows what they could have done? Without him, I might not have been here today to share my story. In short, I returned to, to France the next day, thinking being with my family will be enough. What a mistake. Do you know that 63% of sexual violence offenders in public transport in Paris are from foreigners? I'm tired of seeing our daughters, our mothers and our sisters raped, attacked and murdered. We refuse to turn a blind eye to reality, to be silent. This must stop. Immigration is killing the French people, the British people, European and West. Ladies and gentlemen, moms and dads, grandmas and grandpas, we need you. It's now or never. I ask you to rise up and stop being spectators to the destruction of our own people. Your daughter, your son, our civilization needs you. Join us. Together, let's raise our voices to defend the rights, safety and freedom of European women. Let this movement cross borders and close them to those who do not respect our values. One of the solutions I'm proposing today is to start a Nemesis branch here in London. Join us, come speak to us, follow us on social media, and together, let's expose what English women are also going through. Let's defend our civilization together. Thank you, Grand Britain. There were people from all walks of life, as I say. On the stage was a band, and their leader was a man who said he'd been homeless on the streets of Manchester. And we don't know the full story, but he talked about his journey to faith in Jesus Christ and how he's now living a life where he's seeking to help other people. So the photographs, the pictures tell us everything that happened. There was a very large police presence, but they had no trouble whatsoever. Indeed, as you'll see from some of the footage, some of our people were giving water to the police. And as far as possible, we made sure that we thanked the police for the good work that they did on that day. 
Now, there are concerns about policing in this nation. There's no question about it. The way in which the College of Policing is giving instructions to constables, these are matters that have got to be dealt with. We have got to restore trust in policing so that we can have policing by consent. At the moment, there isn't that consent. It's evaporated because trust, generally speaking, has gone in the police system and in the justice system. But that doesn't mean to say that there aren't good constables all over the country as there are. And there are good people who work in the civil service. But the civil service itself and all of our public institutions have been captured by woke ideology. And all of this is the antithesis of British values. So what does our Judeo-Christian heritage mean? Well, Judeo refers to the religion of the Hebrews, the Jewish people, and Christianity, of course, is Christianity. And the reason we use the two is because the Christian faith, which is the bedrock of British values and heritage, you know, we have an established Church of England, our sovereign has to take his oath of office on the Bible, the Holy Bible, not on any other holy book, and the nation has for centuries been built, its laws, its justice system, our literature, even our language, uh, many of our customs draw from the Bible, which is originally a book of the Hebrews and then combined with the Christian faith. And of course, Christians were first of all Jews and then they were followers of Jesus of Nazareth, which is why we use the term Judeo-Christian. Now, there is a background to Britain prior to Christianity, and that feeds in to some aspects of our culture and our customs, but the overriding framework and bedrock and foundation on which Britain is built is Judeo and Christian. And in fact, all of the great reformers of the 19th century, the ones who led the abolition of the transatlantic slave trade, the ones who stopped children being sent up to chimneys or who helped to bring about better conditions for the working classes in factories and mills, brought in education, Florence Nightingale, the mother of modern nursing, and so many others, did what they did because of their Christian faith. They believed that faith is something that shouldn't be private and within the four walls of a building, but should influence everything we do in society and the way we treat other people. That is why Britain is a Christian nation. It doesn't mean that everyone in the nation is a Christian or has to be one, but it means that you and I enjoy the freedoms that we have, the opportunities, because this is a Christian nation, because that's the nature of Christianity. So I hope that clarifies things. We live in a culturally diverse, pluralistic society. So what that means is that everyone who's welcome, who wants to contribute to being part of Britain, however, what we have to remember at all times is that Britain is Britain. It's not to be changed to be another country. It's not to be changed to bring in another ideology that then requires everyone to submit to that ideology. So these are important aspects of the discussion that's taking place in Britain. Saturday the 26th of October was a peaceful, joyful celebration of being British. And as I've said, there were people from all walks of life going forward. What we need to do is to invite everybody who has alternative views to the British way of life to say, well, if you're in this country, please recognize and value what it means to be in Britain, what it means to be British. That includes things like our union flag, respecting the flag. You know, we can't have the burning of our flag. We can't have the censorship of books. We certainly can't have people saying that we don't want the Bible to be in schools or anything like that, because this is a Christian country. I think I've got the message over, and that's what the people on Saturday, the 26th of October, were seeking to bring out. This is peaceful. This is lawful. This is loving. This is kind. This is how we can encourage healing and hope in our communities here in Britain. So this is the autumn of 2024. In a few months' time, it will be Christmas. What better way to celebrate being part of the British way of life and our 
British heritage than to celebrate, whatever your background, the most amazing gift of hope and peace that we celebrate at Christmas time. So that's something we can talk about in due course. But for now, how wonderful to be able to say that we live in a free country. We want the nation to be kept free. And so we call upon the current government for however long they're going to be there and their current prime minister, despite all the difficulties that he has uh, on his plate, please respect the people of Great Britain, the people who you are there to serve. Let's work together. Let's get on the road to renewal. Let us build hope in Britain and create together a better future for all of us.